Tennis elbow is a common problem and understanding this topic is important. Tennis elbow is called lateral epicondylitis. Tennis elbow is an overuse injury that causes inflammation, tendinosis, and the lateral elbow pain at the origin of a small muscle called the extensor carpi radialis brevis. The function of this muscle is to extend and abduct the hand at the wrist joint. There's another muscle is helping in that function, and it is called the extensor carpi radialis longus. It is a longer muscle. Look at the origin and the insertion of the previous muscle, the short muscle, the tennis elbow muscle. It is inserted right in the middle of the hand. I think there's a lot of burden on this muscle and probably the muscle can't handle it. So when this muscle is overloaded by repetitive activities, it causes pain on the outer side of the elbow. This is the location of the pain on the outer side of the elbow. This pain may interfere with the sleep and the activities or even carrying groceries. The patient with tennis elbow will complain of pain with grabbing and decrease grip strength and pain with repetitive wrist extension, and the patient will have tenderness around the lateral elbow. I'm going to go into some details about this condition. Tennis elbow is somehow connected to playing tennis. They found that during the acceleration phase of tennis ground strokes, the greatest EMG activity will be seen in the extensor carpi radialis brevis muscle. The most common cause of elbow pain is tennis elbow. 50% of tennis players develop tennis elbow due to many technical reasons and risk factors such as incorrect grip size or poor swing technique. This condition is also seen in patients who perform manual labor or sports that require twisting and the extension of the wrist against resistance. This condition may also affect workers who do heavy lifting, repetitive grabbing, or using heavy tools. The condition usually it starts by micro tears of the origin of the extensor carpi radialis brevis due to eccentric overload, which is precipitated and aggravated by repetitive wrist extension and forearm pronation. The pathology of the tendon usually shows disorganized collagen and angiofibroblastic hyperplasia. Basically, the diagnosis of tennis elbow is based on symptoms and physical examination. It's not based on an X-rays or MRIs or EMGs. The provocative test, which will increase the pain at the lateral epicondyle, is resisted wrist extension with the elbow fully extended. The x-rays will be essentially normal. Not every lateral elbow pain is tennis elbow. It can be something else. Think outside the box. Here is a case of radial tunnel syndrome that mimics tennis elbow, but it's not tennis elbow. The provocative test here is wrist extension and spination. In tennis elbow, it is wrist extension and pronation. And this patient failed a lot of conservative treatment for tennis elbow. So think about injecting the radial tunnel to get a diagnosis. Radial tunnel syndrome should be in the differential diagnosis of tennis elbow. 
especially if the patient is not recovering as expected from tennis elbow treatment. The radial tunnel syndrome gives pain at three to four centimeter distal and anterior to the lateral epicondyle. This radial tunnel syndrome occurs in about 5% of the patient due to compression of the posterior interosseous nerve. Here is the area of pain for tennis elbow, and here is the area of pain for radial tunnel syndrome. They are totally different. You also need to roll out cervical disc problems, triceps tendinitis, elbow arthritis, or osteochondritis dissecans. Treatment of tennis elbow, usually conservative treatment first in the form of activity modification, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication, bracing and straps for the elbow, physiotherapy, especially eccentric exercises, acupuncture, shock wave therapy, iontophoresis, and injection, which is frequently used. You may use a steroid injection up to three times or PRP injection. You can use the injection blindly or you can use the injection by ultrasound. There is a 95% success rate with non-operative treatment to relieve the pain in tennis elbow. It may take up to six to 12 months to improve the condition. How do you do the injection? Locate and mark the point of maximum tenderness over the lateral epicondyle. As you can see here, and here, you can see that the origin of the muscle right there at the bone area. And you can see here, the site of injection is marked on a patient. Now let's try to use the ultrasound. The ultrasound is used to visualize and inject the tendon. The elbow is placed into a semi-flexed position with the hand pronated. The transducer is positioned parallel to the lateral epicondyle and the radial head. The radial head is identified, you can see it here in green. The bony cortex of the epicondyle is identified. When the tendon is normal, the tendon is usually smooth and homogeneous with no doubler flow. The origin of the tendon is identified. And you can see here the radial head and the tendon. It's a small tendon actually. The affected tendon may show tears, calcification, or thickening. The doubler may show increased flow in the tendon. Here you can see the needle while we injecting steroids or PRP. You can also do some needle fenestration or needling, which will help tendon healing by improving its blood supply. Surgery is the last resort. When conservative treatment fails, the surgery entails debridement of the involved tendon. Excessive debridement and release of the tendon can lead to injury to the lateral collateral ligament and may lead to posterolateral rotatory instability of the elbow. Here you can see that important ligament marked by the arrow, it's very close to the extensor carboidialis previs muscle origin. So when we release and debride that tendon, we may injure that ligament and create elbow instability. Surgery is usually successful in about 85% of patients.